So Lord, help us as we look introspectively into our lives and to realize not what we was. Help us to not think of the past, but what Jesus has done to make us who we are today and what we will become in the future when we give our lives totally over to you and make you another one in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So that question, who am I? And you know, so many times we get reminded by maybe our friends, maybe even people that are close to us, on um, what we are. Now, growing up, how many of you have been made fun of? And they, they called names. What, what are some names that people have called you that you remember? Eddie, Eddie Muschietti. Eddie what? Eddie Muschietti. Muschietti? Okay. Whatever that means, right? Yeah. Anybody else? Trigger. 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 Oh, trigger. Okay. I can see where that comes from. Anybody else? Probably some of it is too painful for us to even mention, right? I know, you know, they, they used to say... Uh, <laughs> They used to call me all kinds of names. They used to call me daikon, which is a Japanese word for a radish, daikon. And it, uh, my mom used to make it, you know, it's a pickled radish. But the thing about daikon, it was a very smelly type of food to eat, but it sure tasted good. <laughs> daikon. I know growing up, that constantly we are reminded of who we don't want to be. But the thing is that if we focus on the negative things of the past and we dwell in there, then what is going to come to our mind is who we don't want to be. And I think what happens is when we are, as we grow up and we associate with other people, we act out what we think we are. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How many of you have ever been to a grocery store and, and the little boy is touching the different merchandise and mom says, don't do that. And he keeps on doing it. And she says, you are a bad boy. Bad boy. So growing up when he's constantly been told that he is a bad boy, guess what he becomes? A bad boy. A bad boy because he said that's his identity is I'm a bad boy. Mom tells me and I respect my mom because she knows better and she knows that I'm a bad boy and he acts out who he believes he is. You know what I'm, you understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And I think so many times that we have been put down, and I think we sometimes, as we become adults, still believe the old lie that we are bad people, that we'll never amount to anything. And I think what happens is, um, and I hear this, is that there's a lot of bullying going on in schools. You haven't heard that, have you? No, no, no. And you're telling me a lie here. <laughs> Why do people pick on other people? To make themselves feel, feel better, but because They're they don't have self-worth themselves. Mm -hmm. Hurt people, hurt people. And and you know that saying, misery likes company? Huh? It's true, right? When we're not feeling good about ourselves, guess what? We're going to make other people feel bad so that they can join in me in my misery. 
Now, how smart is that? You know, I just thought about this. One of my scripture, script, uh, favorite scripture verses comes from Philippians, the second chapter. And when I was in college, I started memorizing this passage. But it talks about have this attitude, right, in Christ Jesus. And he says that we should look out for others, other people's interests before our own interests. And so many times it goes the other way around. We want to be something, and so we try to be better than other people instead of the other way around and serving people and their needs and considering other people's interests better than ourselves or more important than ourselves. It goes on saying that have this attitude in Christ Jesus who although exists in the form of God, here's Jesus, God, he didn't even regard equality with God something that he needed to reach out for because he was God. He emptied himself. He gave it all up and became a human being made in likeness of men. Now you think about that, okay? What did Jesus, God, have to do to become mankind? Well, first of all, is he had to sub subject himself to a human woman who had never had kids before, right? She was a virgin. And so she didn't have any experience in raising a son. He had to subject himself to that. He had to subject himself to pain. I mean, I'm pretty sure every once in a while he was running and he would trip and fall and he would get cut and he would bleed, just like everybody else. I mean, Scripture does say that he experienced everything in life that we've experienced, but yet without sin. So you think about that that he subjected himself and he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. But it says, and God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So now you think about it, how many people out there in our own community, just a small community here, are not bowing the knee before the Lord Jesus Christ? Every single one of them, someday, if they haven't done it now, hopefully it's not going to be too late when they do bow the knee before the Lord Jesus Christ, to acknowledge that He is God, that He is the King of kings and He is the Lord. Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up, you know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. And when I think about that, how can God be so focused on me when there's how many people in the world, billions of people in the world, and he knows everyone intimately. In fact, the scripture says he knows how many strands of hair we have on our head. How much more intimate could our Heavenly Father be with every single person? Well, remember, he is omniscient. He is omniscient, knows everything. He is omnipresent. He can be here and in Africa at the same time. And how do you comprehend that? Well, I tell you what, you might as well give up trying to figure it out. Because if you could figure it out, you can let me know, plus you would be God. Because only God has all knowledge, can be everywhere at the same time, but yet be intimate and personal with every single one of us. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. 
you know what I'm going to say even before I say it. Oh, you don't even know that, right? right. And sometimes we say things without even thinking, and guess what? We regret it. <laughs> and we try to, <laughs> we'd like to catch that and then shove it back in like it never happened before. You go before me and follow me. You're, you place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Too great for me to understand. I can't comprehend God. But you know, we can make an attempt to know Him as much as we can. And He has given us everything we ever needed to know Him as much as He desires for us to know Him. And even though He has written in His Word all the things we need to know about Him, we still don't know. Because we can pick up the Word of God one day and then pick it up the next day and read the same thing and get this light bulb that pops in your head. Ever, ever happen to you? Huh? Yeah. Wow, why didn't I see it that way? And that's what it means by the word God is living and active. You see, the word of God has a way of teaching us during our spiritual growth that it will minister to us where we at. And so when we're here, it'll teach us this, but when we grow and mature, it'll help us to become a better person, to be more like Christ. Isn't that awesome? I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to the heaven, you are there. And if I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride in the winds of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest ocean, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Now, one of the things that will help me understand God and His presence is I, I like to be reminded of when I used to go deep sea fishing. Now, I wasn't a very good swimmer growing up and maybe it's because my brothers tried to drown me several times. I mean, that's what I thought. I mean, they pushed me under the water, right? And I, <laughs> and I thought I was going to drown. Now, I don't think they would really intentionally drown me. They're just trying to scare me, right? And so when I used to go deep sea fishing, if my dad wasn't there, I, I would have had this fear inside of me that what happens if the boat tipped over and I I, I would drown, right? But for some reason, when, when my dad was on that boat, I had no fear. Now, what is it? Uh, a man out, maybe say a mile out from the shore, going to be a <laughs> to save me. But it was his presence there on the boat that gave me peace. And if we had that same concept where our Heavenly Father, who could, rescue us from anything and have a feeling of peace knowing that God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. Then we should have no fear, right? Because perfect love casts out just some of you fear. All of I, I didn't hear that. I mean, I heard that, but it, 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 I don't think everybody heard it. What is it? All. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So what should we fear about? Nothing. Nothing. Because God is present in your life. And maybe if we actually live that God was present in our lives, that he is right there and he's concerned with us and knows everything that is going on in our lives, then maybe that peace just descend upon us no matter what we're going through. You guys understand what I'm talking about? So even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, 
But even in the darkest, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You see, there's nothing that God can bring us through. No matter how dark it is, no, no matter what kind of sorrow we're going through, no matter what kind of pain we're going through, God is there. The, the only thing is that we have to recognize his presence. And, and how can we do that? You see, God is, like, if you can just picture it, God is standing right next to you. And all you got to do is reach out to him, and he's right there. But so many times, we picture God way up there in the sky somewhere, far away, and we're praying, and sometimes when we pray, we feel that the prayer is getting bounced off the ceiling back to us, and that God is not listening. But maybe the next time you pray, picture that this, there's this light that is right here. Actually, he's right inside our lives, right? The Holy Spirit is within us. We need to pray that, that God is there listening to us instead of somewhere out there. And then we can just communicate with Him just like I'm talking to you right now. And when you recognize His presence and you read His Word, it's just like talking back and forth. This is what we call communion. Fellowship. You see, God desires to have fellowship with each and every one of us. But the problem is not God. It's ours that we don't recognize His presence in our life. You made all the delicate inner parts of our body and knit me together in my mother's womb. And, and when I think about the I know there's some doctors that understand all the functions of the body and all that. And some of them think they, they know more than they do know. Because, you know, they try to diagnose somebody and they come up with a wrong problem that, and then you find out later that, well, the, the doctor really doesn't know it. In fact, sometimes the patient knows more than the doctor, and if the doctor would just listen to the patient, guess what? You wouldn't have to try to figure out what's going on because the patient knows more than the doctor as far as what's happening, right? You, you know what I'm talking about? But when we have a physician, God, that knows everything about us, actually knows more than we know, and we can depend on him because he's dependable and he's faithful. We talked about that last week. And when I think about how I eyes eyes Or our ears. Huh? Anybody ever say, huh? Excuse me? Can you say it again? I'm hard of hearing. And, you know, our mind goes, right? Yeah, I have hearing aids, but I forgot my hearing aids at home. And so, you know, I go everything. I, as we get older, our, our body, body starts to fall apart. But you know what? God never falls apart. God is constant. And he cares about everything that goes in our, in our whole life. And when I think about it, when I get cut and how it starts bleeding, and, and then we, you know, we'll put some uh, ointment on and some, you know, hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide or something to, to clean it out and all this, and we bend it up. And, and, and how it heals. What a wonderful creation we are. And this whole concept of, of how a baby is formed in a mother's womb is just so awesome. I cannot understand how people can just say there's no God. Thank you. 
for making me so 